growing up, my dad used to tell my brothers and I that the only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. And then he would do this funny little dance that kind of went a bit like this. When I was little, I loved that, thought it was hilarious. And as I was grappling with change in the playground, with friends and things like that, he'd talk about this, he'd say the quote, I'd dance with him, and it was a lot of fun. As you can imagine, as a teenager, it was less funny, especially when he decided to impart this wisdom about managing change with my friends. I particularly remember at the end of my GCSEs in year 11, when I was about to start a new school, or at the end of the sixth form, DP equivalent at age 18, when I was about to go to university, and my friends were there, and my dad decided that those moments were important to tell me and my friends that nothing is ever permanent except change. Then he would proceed to dramatically share his quote and then do that dance. As you can imagine, I quickly tried to get my friends away and move away from, from that embarrassing dance moment. Interestingly, during these moments of my dad imparting this, this wisdom, my mum would be in the background laughing and often adding things like, yes, Keith, but remember, you do have to have a supported network with you, or yes, and appreciate the small things. When I was 21, I remember being back from my final year of university, and I was sitting on the city, which is a couch in British English, and I clearly remember feeling pretty sad. It was hard. I was grappling with a particularly difficult breakup of my first boyfriend, and I was sitting there, and my dad came into the room. I remember he was wearing this like dark green jumper with squares on it. It was a bit bizarre. But he sat next to me, and I was telling him my story, very dramatically. Everything was gone wrong. Everything that I had planned was going to have to change. This was terrible, and it's not my choice. It's ruined. What am I going to do? He sat there, and he listened to my story. He asked me a couple of questions. He paused, and then he said, Cat, that's what my family call me, the only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join a different dance now. This time, he didn't do the dance moves. I really remember that moment. And as I was thinking about this, I remember all of those moments as kind of family banter, and I didn't think much of it until I got older. And then I had to go out into the world and grapple with change constantly by myself. And I realized that my dad was my first mentor and coach. My dad would always listen. He would always challenge. He would always ask questions. He did not tell me what to do, but he gave me the space to figure things out. And most importantly, he helped me to find my own skills to navigate uncertainty and sometimes see if they could be viewed differently to see if perhaps I could change that story, that narrative, a little bit. With a sense of fun, often with a sense of fun. Now, I could keep telling you stories about my childhood all afternoon, but that's not really the point. And you're probably wondering what I'm talking about and why I'm up here telling you stories about when I was growing up. Well, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a friend, but right now, I'm standing here as a teacher and as an educational leader. And I'm talking to my fellow educators out there in the audience. We know that nothing is permanent but change, as my dad said. We know that the world changes, at the moment, quickly. 
And we know as educators that in our educational institutions, in our learning communities, things change rapidly. Curriculum reviews, new initiatives, faculty turnover, new leadership, technological advances, changes to learning management systems maybe resonate out there with my secondary colleagues. Sometimes these changes we can embrace. We, we really see why we need to do them. And sometimes maybe we can't see why, but we need to. Maybe we can't see the purpose. Maybe we think it's pointless. Maybe we're just tired. We've done it before. But as educators, we do need to model these skills for our students. Change is inevitable. In our institutions, change is inevitable. So how can we ensure that we're modeling for our students that sometimes we have to put a toe into that dance? whether we want to or not, and it might be difficult. The conversation I had with my dad when I was 21, when he was sharing and asking me those questions, has really stuck with me. Because in that conversation, because he intentionally held space for me and prompted me to think about my own story and how it could change, it gave me a little tiny glimmer of, of hope, or perhaps a little moment of maybe, in my dramatic state at that point, I could reframe the story. But he didn't belittle it. It took a long time, that was hard. It took me a lot of work to reframe and, and change that narrative and that story. More tears, more conversations, a lot of work. But that conversation gave that budding moment that maybe this is possible. In our educational institutions, it's fast, things are busy. How can we really do this in our everyday life? How can we ensure that sometimes we can help each other with all of this change? As I've continued to grow and, and work, there are a few things that I think are really, really important for me as a teacher and an educational leader to manage some of these change in our institutions and our learning communities to make it a little bit easier to join that dance, especially when we don't want to. Making the change visible to everybody on the team. Why is this change happening? Why now? Why is it important? Trying to be as transparent as possible to build that trust. We might not like it, but maybe if we understand the why, it'll help us to be able to join, even at the periphery at, at the beginning. Kind of coupled with that is this open dialogue as a team, but also making sure that we validate the resistance or the feelings of resistance or why we might not want to do it. It's okay. We don't always want to do everything all the time. And then my mum, she resonated with me so much. Look for those small positives or the tiny little windows of opportunities or something that you can just appreciate with perhaps the change that isn't necessarily what you want to plunge into. Now, this is great, lovely, you know, thanks Kate, but we, we know this, this is nothing new. Educators out there, I know I'm not saying anything different today or anything new, but I do think there's one extra key ingredient for want of a better word, maybe a component to this that can help and in my experience as an educator and growing up, this has been a hugely helpful part of me being able to reframe my stories or tweak the narrative sometimes when perhaps it's difficult to change. It's almost like a little bit of a, a key to help those other pieces. With this key component, it can allow educators to be a little bit more resilient in the face of all these changes that are thrown at us. With this key component, it can allow us to have that time to really think about why we're resistant to the change, and then maybe have some time to look for that way that it could be reframed. Maybe this key component could help explore that issue, not to be like a problem to be solved, but a way to find something that could be a possibility or an opportunity. That might be hard. 
And so having someone there to really help with that journey can be incredibly powerful. I told a story to open my speech today. My dad listened to my stories. Imagine if in our educational busy lives, we had trusted people readily available to listen to our daily teaching stories. Maybe they could explore that story and help us look at that narrative and think, what might be different if that story was a reframed, a different perspective, or ended in a different way, or continued in a slightly different way? How powerful that could be if somebody was listening, I mean really listening, to what we were saying. If someone was holding that intentional space for us to think and perhaps grow. Maybe with this key component, we could find possibility within the uncertainty of change more easily. And maybe when it's difficult, we have someone to share that with. Obviously, I'm sure you've guessed that really what I'm talking about is in our educational institutions, having a culture where professional mentoring and coaching is embedded within what we do. If our professional learning was embedded in this idea of being able to have meaningful conversations and hold intentional space for each other, it could be transformational. As teachers, this would allow us to model this for our students. If we could hold these intentional spaces for each other and be able to impart this for our students so that they can gather these skills as they go out into the world and navigate uncertainty and change and the speed at which things have to happen with more resilience, with a skill set to be able to take a breath. Hmm, what can I explore within this? Where's the possibility? Why might there be a glimmer of help, hope? And also validate that it's okay for it to be difficult. It's okay to feel resistant. I'm gonna see if we've got any active listeners in the audience right now. So, can anybody remember what color jumper, which is a sweater, what color jumper was my dad wearing in my very important, poignant conversation when I was 21? Shout out if you can remember. <laughs> Excellent, a few people there actively listening to my speech. Thank you very much. I wanted to bring it back to my dad at this point because I was really, really lucky when I was growing up to have my dad as a mentor and a coach, even though I didn't realize. I was really lucky that my mum gave me this wonderful gift of being able to try and find a positive or a reframe a situation, even if it was really hard to find. I'm so lucky. That has allowed me to really seek out mentoring and coaching in my own life, and particularly in my own professional career. I have been so lucky to have such wonderful professional, educational mentors and coaches throughout my teaching career that I really feel have helped me be more present with my students and my colleagues every day. And now I get to do that. As an educational leader, I really want to make sure that I embody the coaching way of being and hold intentional space to hear my colleagues and students, of course, and I'm teaching them, but my colleagues' intentional space for them to share their story and to try and help them find a way to reframe that story to maybe find it just a little bit easier to have to plunge in and join a dance that maybe isn't necessarily the dance they want to join. Maybe the dance is really hard. Maybe we keep messing up the steps. But it says there, how powerful could it be if we get to explore these dances with someone 
who is really there to intentionally hold that space for you, help you grow, and look for the small glimmers of ways that it could be reframed. Thank you very much.